In the last video on the channel about margins and columns, we did a little offset path. And in that I said to ignore the join or the miter limit. And the reason for that was because we weren't using it at the time. Why did we ignore that and when should we consider it? And you may be having some trouble in your document when it comes to sharp edges and the miter limit, the miter, the joins, those all affect the corners of your shapes. So if we hop into Illustrator here, we've got a triangle just set up right there. And then in my appearance on the right hand side in the properties panel, I've got stroke. If I click on stroke, we can go into the stroke options. Now you'll see here that we have corner and we can select a miter join, a round join, or a bevel. The round will simply round each of these corners. The bevel will basically cut it off kind of like a beveled flat edge. And then the miter generally will give you a point. However, it won't always give you a point because there is a miter limit. So when I scale this down and we go back to our stroke options, notice how there's a limit over here to the side. The miter limit is basically a ratio. It's a ratio between the length of the point or the stroke sort of going into the point versus the stroke width. Now, you don't really need to know the ratio very much like offhand. You kind of just need to know that eventually the miter limit is gonna come into play if you have longer strokes in your design. If we look at this limit and we drop it down to actually it looks like two is the number, one of our joins becomes a beveled edge. The other two are still pointy, if you will. Now, if I increase this limit to three, they're all covered. If I duplicate this triangle out, and let's say I want to create an even taller triangle, so I'm gonna pull just this point way up here, notice how it's got the beveled edge now, the other two are fine. The reason for that is because this length right here is a lot shorter than this length here. So once again, that ratio or relationship between your stroke width and the length is kind of beyond the limit. It's beyond the miter limit. So we've got to increase the limit to get all of our points onto our shape. So we're gonna just up this limit and it looks like once we hit five, we've got it. So for this shape, it's five. For this one, it was something like two or three. If we continue this and increase this even more, you're gonna notice the same thing happens. So the miter limit can be set anywhere from I believe one or zero to 500. Um, for this one, I think the general default is 10. And 10 will pretty much cover you in most cases. But if you're finding some instances where you do have beveled corners, they're not the miter pointy corners that you're looking for, that's where you gotta go change the miter limit until you get the pointy corner to show up. Now. What's the ratio? What's the relationship? It does have an X on the side, so it's like 7X, the stroke width or something like that, but you really don't have to think about that. Just increase it until you get the points that you're looking for. So this is kind of maybe an obscure uh, setting in Illustrator, and it really only comes up rarely, but there are times where you might be wondering why it's a beveled or chopped off edge versus the pointy edge that you're looking for or even vice versa, or why some of the corners in your shape show up like that and some of them don't. This is why it has to do with the relationship between the length of the stroke and the width of the stroke. Just increase that miter limit and you should be able to get those pointy points on the edges and corners of your shapes and objects in Illustrator just like you want. That's it for this tutorial, real quick one. I'm Spencer from Pixel and Bracket and I'll see you guys next time.